name is Rebecca. I'm a graduate student at the University of Pennsylvania, and I work with Dr. James Peterson. So Anne already taught you how to grow single colonies of bacteria on a plate. In order to express protein, the first step is that we must amplify this bacteria. In order to amplify the bacteria, we will pick a single colony from the plate and inoculate a small five milliliter primary culture. In order to determine if the cells are growing, we can tell because the solution will become more cloudy. You can physically see the bacteria swirling around in solution compared to the point at which we first inoculated. Once we know that our cells are growing healthily in the primary culture, we can then transfer our cells to a larger secondary culture. And so the secondary culture will typically be about 500 milliliters to one liter total volume. Finally, we'll inoculate the secondary culture and allow it to grow to a certain point of cloudiness. Um, and at this point, we will add a small molecule inducer of protein expression known as IPTG. Finally, the culture will appear to be cloudy and protein expression will have been occurring for approximately 12 hours at 25 degrees Celsius. And at this point, we will centrifuge our solution to pellet the bacteria such that we can separate the physical bacteria from their liquid growth medium. In order to separate our bacteria from the liquid growth medium, we are going to centrifuge our bacterial growth. The way that a centrifuge works is that it will spin our centrifuge bottles as well as the liquid growth medium at a very high speed, at 30,000 revolutions per minute. After spinning for a long period of time, what will happen is that the pellet will be transferred to the bottom of the tube, such that we can now separate it by simply decanting off the liquid growth medium. Centrifugation will take approximately 20 minutes. And at this point, we will be ready for purification. After centrifugation, you can see that the pellets are now down at the bottom of the tube in a clump. As you can see, the green fluorescent protein is contained in the bacteria that's clumped at the bottom of the bottle, whereas no green fluorescent protein is in the liquid medium. separate the bacteria from the liquid medium, we simply have to pour the liquid medium into a separate container. After we remove the excess media, we are going to break up the cells and prepare them for purification. So this solution is our lice bacterial pellet. And although we cause the bacteria to specifically produce the green fluorescent protein, we will still need to remove protein specifically from the other thousands of proteins that the E. coli cell produces. Additionally, we will have to remove the protein from other material that's contained within the cell. In order to specifically remove the green fluorescent protein, we're going to take advantage of a special amino acid tag that was engineered onto the protein. This particular tag can bind really well to these nickel beads, and other proteins contained within the cell cannot bind to these nickel beads. The first step of running a protein purification column is to bind the cell lysate with the nickel beads for approximately one hour. Next, we will apply the incubated beads and lysate to a column. The first step is to collect the material that does not bind to the nickel beads. And if there is a large amount of protein, we may have some excess protein that cannot bind. So this material will be our flow through. After washing the flow through, the first step will be to wash the beads. Our first washing solution does not contain a chemical known as midazole, which will allow our protein to elute from the column. So as you can see, we have a lot of excess green fluorescent protein that did not bind to the beads, and this will continue to flow through as we are washing the column. Eventually, the solution that elutes from the column will turn clear. At this point, we will continue to wash to remove all the other proteins and material from the cell lysate. As you can see, after several steps of washing, the beads remain fluorescent as the GFP is still bound. At this point, we will elute the protein from the column using a solution that contains imidazole. 
Our third step will be to remove the green fluorescent protein from the nickel resin by adding a special solution that will remove the protein specifically from the beans. And so after we add the solution, we can see that when we collect the flow through the column, that the flow through will now contain the green fluorescent protein. And you can see this as the drops begin to exhibit green fluorescence. And so we will add washing buffer until we no longer can observe the green fluorescent protein bound to the nickel resin. So after purification, we now have a solution that contains only the green fluorescent protein. This protein has allowed biochemists to study important cellular mechanisms for several years. So once again, I'm Rebecca. I'm a graduate student at the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching.